I beg to move the following motion, starting my name, Mr. Speaker. For whereas it is provided, I under Section 21 of the Public Finance Management Act 15.01 of the Act, that the Minister of Finance may, by an affirmative resolution in Parliament, establish a special fund to collect money that must be used for a specific purpose. And whereas it is further provided that Section 22.2 of the Act, that the resolution of sub subsection 1 must state the purpose of the special fund, B, the money to be paid into the special fund, C, the means of collecting money to be paid into the special fund, D, the source of the monies of the special fund, E, the accounting officer responsible for the administration of the special fund, and F, the terms for which the special fund should be maintained. Whereas the Minister of Finance, with the approval of Parliament, considers it necessary to establish a special fund to be known as an anti-crime initiative fund, the fund, for the purpose of providing monies to execute an anti-crime initiative, including crime prevention, law enforcement, and other measures for national security. And whereas the source and monies to be paid into the fund comprises in relation to the Procedure of the Crime Act, Cap 3.04, under Section 9, Cash, cash forfeited. Two, on a section 10, the proceeds of a sale of forfeited property. Three, on a section 14, the proceeds of a charging order. Four, on a section 17, money is paid as satisfaction of a confiscation order. B, sums referred to under paragraph A that has been paid into a bank account to provide a account general in the charge of. Section 21 of the Act, the the payment account procedures applies to the fund. And whereas, in accordance with Section 22 and 3 of the Act, the accounting officer administering the fund shall be paid of one month after the end of the financial year to pay, sign, and pay the accounting of the financial position of the fund at the end of the financial year. And B, the statement of paragraph A must include 1. A small asset. A statement of receipts and payments of the fund. A statement of investments and interests or dividends credited to the fund. And whereas the government's chief of the attorney general's chambers is the account of the fund, which is responsible for the financial of the fund. And as the fund must maintain as it is closed at the Minister of Finance on the second 24. Which is the part of the third general to decay, and the purpose of which is established has been fulfilled or no longer exists. In the opinion of the minister, there is no likelihood that the purpose for which the fund could lawfully be used by the rights in the future, or the terms specified in this resolution for the fund has expired. It is all that the Parliament authorizes the Minister of Finance to establish a special fund to be known as the Anti-Crime Initiative Fund for the purpose of providing means to execute an anti-crime initiative including crime prevention, law enforcement, and other measures of national security. We feel a result that A, source and money is to be in the fund for prices 1, in relation to the proceeds of Crime Act, Cap 3.04, A, under Section 9, Cash Fitted, B, under Section 10, the proceeds of a sale of forfeited property. C. Under Section 14, the proceeds of a charging order. D. Under Section 17, money is paid in satisfaction of a confiscation order. 2. Sums referred to under subparagraph 1 that have been paid into a bank account approved by the Accountant General in the charge of the Accountant General. B. In accordance with Section 23, 2 and 3 of the Act. 1. The accounting officer administering the fund within a period of one month after the end of the financial year prepare, sign, and submit to the accountant general statement showing the financial position of the fund at the end of the financial year. 2. The statements on the subparagraph 1 must include a statement of assets and liabilities of the fund, a detailed statement of receipts and payments of the fund, the statement of investments and interest or dividends credited to the fund. Section 23 one of the Act relating to the payment and accounting procedures applies to the fund. <coughs> D. 
The permanent secretary of the Attorney General's Chambers is the accounting officer who is responsible for administering the fund. E. The fund must be maintained unless it is closed by the Minister of Finance under Section 24 of the Act, where the Minister of Finance receives a report from the Attorney General to indicate that the purpose of which the fund was established has been fulfilled or no longer exists. And in the opinion of the Minister, there is no likelihood that the purpose for which the fund could lawfully be used will arise in the future. Or the terms specified in this resolution for the fund has expired. Mr. Speaker, the purpose of the Public Finance Management Act Resolution of Parliament to establish an anti-crime initiative fund is to provide for the establishment of a special fund to be known as the Anti-Crime Fund. In its 2021 Mutual Evaluation Report, the Caribbean Financial Action Task Force identified certain deficiencies with respect to mechanisms under St. Lucia's legal framework to deal with civil asset recovery and forfeiture. As a consequence, St. Lucia was required to amend the Proceeds of Crime Act Cap 3.04 to address the deficiencies identified in the report. In particular, recommendation number four of the report now requires countries to provide mechanisms for managing and disposing frozen seas or confiscated property. Similarly, with respect to recommendation 48 of the report, Mutual Legal Assistance Freeze and Confiscation, St. Lucia was rated partially compliant at the CFATF found that there is no mechanism to place for the management of frozen seas or confiscated property. The resolution, Mr. Speaker, provides that all property confiscated must be deposited into the fund. The purpose of the fund is to provide monies to government agencies to execute an anti-crime initiative, including crime prevention, law enforcement, and other measures for national security. <clears throat> Of particular note, the resolution identifies the source and monies to be paid into the fund, which comprises cash forfeited, the proceeds of a sale of forfeited property, the proceeds of a charging order, money paid in satisfaction of a confiscation order, and money paid into bank account approved by the accountant general in charge in the charge of the attorney general. The resolution, Mr. Speaker, also provides for the permanent secretary of the Attorney General's Chambers to administer the fund. The resolution further provides for certain safeguards to ensure accountability and transparency with respect to administration of the fund. In particular, the accounting officer administering the fund is required within a period of one month after the end of the financial year to prepare, sign, and submit to the accountant general statements showing the financial position of the fund at the end of the financial year. These financial statements must include a statement of the assets and liabilities of the fund, a detailed statement of receipts and payments of the fund, and a statement of investments and interest or dividends credited to the fund. It also requ is a requirement that the fund must be maintained unless it is closed by the Minister of Finance. In circumstances where the minister receives a report from the Attorney General which indicates that the purpose for which the fund was established has been fulfilled or no longer exists. And in the opinion of the minister, there is no likelihood that the purpose for which the fund could lawfully be used will arise in the future. Alternatively, the requirement to maintain the fund ceases if the terms specified in the resolution expires. Mr. Speaker, the resolution allows St. Lucia to take the necessary steps towards satisfying its international obligations as outlined by the CFATF. Even more, it provides an avenue to properly secure and manage the proceeds of criminal conduct and also utilize these proceeds as a financial mechanism to fight the war on crime, which threatens the safety, sanctity, and security of our citizens. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, all this resolution is saying is that we have to create a special account in which we can put money that's confiscated, properties that seized and sold, all proceeds of crime to be put in an account where that account will be used for national security and crime prevention. But what this resolution calls for is that special account where the use of the money can be transparent 
and the money can be accounted for. This is all, Mr. Speaker, and this is to first to be able to meet our mutual evaluation requirements and be in compliance with the requirements of the Caribbean Financial Action Task Force. Nothing new, Mr. Speaker, just an account where we can put all money that's seized and confiscated and we can be able to account for it in a, in a transparent matter. Mr. Speaker, I urge members to support. Honourable members, the question is that Parliament authorizes the Minister for Finance to establish a special fund to be known as the Anti-Crime Initiative Fund for the purpose of providing monies to execute an anti-crime initiative, including crime prevention, law enforcement, and other measures for national security. Be it further resolved that A, the source and monies to be paid into the fund comprises one, in relation to the Proceeds of Crime Act Cap 304, under Section 9, cash forfeited, under Section 10, the Proceeds of a Sale of Forfeited Property, under Section 14, the Proceeds of a Charge in Order, under Section 17, monies paid in satisfaction of a confiscation order, two, sums referred to under Paragraph 1 that have been paid into a bank account approved by the